Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Well, today, we realize with each passing day that it won't be long before some of what the Lord has spoke to believers about will indeed come to pass. Today is that day that you sit down and you're quiet and the Lord provides you with a bit of instruction, advice, counsel. Today is that day that you pick up the phone and someone tells you something that will change the direction that you were going in. Today is that day that some things are set up for some future occurrences. And so those duties that you have to perform were supposed to have been done yesterday, but now you're pressed for time and you've got to get them done. But while these arrangements are being made, while the conversations are taking place, while the prep work is being done, and while some folks are being led from one direction to another, there will be war. Who's going to be there for your war cry? Sometimes some individuals, when they're battling, when they're going through the stress of having to once again pick up and move, for instance, it's not going to be as easy as we would like. It starts off that way, or sometimes it doesn't start off that way, but things get better. But then at some point, all of the difficulty, the challenges, the money spent, you let out that war cry. I got to have the energy to fight the next battle. I can't keep sitting here sulking and talking about. Some individuals don't even want to hear when you're going through because their plate is full. Some folks to talk to you, it's like, okay, what else are you going to tell me? What else am I going to have to do? Please don't give me anything more because I'm so caught up in my thoughts right now. Please, I hope that this conversation won't be long because I got a lot to do. Come on, some of you all, you know what you think. You may not say it, but you know what you think. And God is listening. God knows your spirit. He knows what more you can take and what more you can't take. And some individuals who I've recently spoke to, they said, I can't take anymore. Okay, so their prayer has been for peace, for take some things from me, Lord Jesus. You see, and as much as we want God to take some things from us, guess what? (laughs) There are those times where he's not. I know somebody doesn't want to hear that. That's not very encouraging. Well, when we're going through our share of battles and challenges and we're setting up for future occurrences, whether you're in an industry that it seems like that's all y'all you guys ever do. Or whether you're the woman who's at home and you hear from your kids every now and again. Or you're the man who recently lost a loved one. Or you're the sister, the brother, the cousin, the aunt, the uncle who has his or her share of physical illness. I mean, you know, sometimes we just got to go through. We just got to go through. We got to pick ourselves up by the bootstraps. Or somebody else has to do that. (laughs) Or somebody is going to push you in the back and tell you, get up, get up. I'm tired of you sitting around. Procrastinating is not going to get the job done. Making excuses is not going to get the job done. You could be doing your prep work. But I just can't. I just can't face another. If you spend less time seated in front of that television, if you spend less time listening to this one and that one telling you about problems and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. I don't understand why you can't, why you won't. Because some folks, they can't even get to their war cry because they haven't even stood up yet. Come on. Some folks can't even get to where they need to go because they haven't even got the tools yet that they were told repeatedly to get. So that they can be ready for battle when battle comes. 
I mean, we got a lot of things that are happening now even that are setting some things in motion for the future that even the media is going to have to run <laughs> toward that story. No, you can't sit in the studio for this one. <laughs> Some folks are going to be itching to take their mic off and go where the action is because the action is right outside your door or the action is right there in the street, not too far from where you work or the action is right around the corner. See, we see these things in the spiritual realm. We see them in the spiritual realm. That's why we know not to go to certain places. That's why we know not to link up with certain people. We already know that God got a certain type of a designated spot and he intends on changing the atmosphere in such a way where folks are going to not be able to tell a lie because we all see come on see it's said that it has to take so much war so many war cries so much difficulty challenge and stress to get some things done with some individuals so stubborn not to sign a document so stubborn not to go where they need to go so stubborn that they just want to argue or they just want to sit quietly and i'm not talking to any of you all and none of you guys know anything especially our elders our seniors you know the mind isn't where it used to be. And when somebody comes along and tells you something, you want to start yelling and have an attitude and you want to do the whole silent treatment or you want to walk away from them and go up in your room and pout and whatever else. And God is saying you sooner or later are going to have to face the situation. Maybe that person's not going to come back around again, but sooner or later, you're going to have to face the situation. And this is why some individuals lose property because they didn't want to face the reality. They didn't want to adhere to the warnings to the protocols to the procedures they didn't want to take counsel that could save them from losing their property mm, i'm seeing that in the spirit there's some people that's losing property because see they were saying that some folks were conspiracy theorists and ten heads and whatever else that they like to call people when they don't want to realize the truth i had one particular son who looked at me when he got a clue as to what was happening based on some subject matter he was researching he said do you know all those years those people turned out to be right mm. <laughs> i said see when you guys were running around the house little kids you know and i called you guys around the computer and i was pointing some things out and when i was telling you some things in the spiritual realm you guys were listening back then and then you went off and you started playing and so forth. And then you got around some people who wanted to tell you something different. And now that you're grown, you see things for what they are and you realize, oh, yeah, that wasn't crazy talk. Yeah, exactly. So now the war shows up and somebody has a war cry. But who's around you now? Okay, that war cry could be you standing up and yelling at everybody. That war cry could be you calling out to the one true God and saying, when, when, when am I supposed to move into battle? When, when, when am I supposed to relocate? Lord Jesus, I got a lot of opposition up against me right now, but I need your guidance. I need your strength. I need your mercy. I need your courage. I need you to deliver me from the enemy, Lord. I need your angels of protection surrounding all around me. I need your love, your grace, your mercy. Oh, Lord Jesus, I know you you said they shall follow me well please lord give me some peace of mind knowing that you are with me that you are my shepherd you are my rock you are my fortress Woo, lord jesus you are like that eagle that flies mm. and i'm under your wing hallelujah jesus 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 come on somebody because see when you say jesus oh <laughs> you just start up a war a war that God going to give you the strength. He going to give you the blueprint. He going to give you the strategy. He going to give you the mission to go on in and conquer. Because that's what the believer does. We fight with spiritual weapons. And the enemy knows this. And that's why he want to mess with your brain. 
He want to mess with your spirit. He want to mess with your blood. He wants you to be so weak that you won't have the strength. And many folks never did get their strength back to be able to pray, to be able to go and fight, to be able to do the things that you need to do because that man or that woman in the next room keeps stirring up some things. Lord Jesus. And they don't have Jesus, but you do. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let me tell you something. When I go through the house and I say things like Jesus, the demonic starts getting mad. The demonic starts having an attitude mm -hmm, in the spiritual realm. Now he's got to find out how, how am I going to get under somebody's skin so that she gets so upset, so emotional. Some of it, some of you all in customer service, you know how it goes. You're starting off, you got a good day. You know, demonic is working on some people. They come in because they got an attitude. Because they don't like the product. They don't like the service. They don't like the fact that somebody didn't treat them like a king or queen because I spent my hard-earned money and all that. So the monkey is on their back. And for some of you all, the monkey was on your back. And you need to confess and repent because you had no business talking crazy to some people. Some folks would have went above and beyond. But see, you came in with a battle that you didn't need to have. You came in with a war cry that you didn't need to scream and yell. But for some of you others... You've been talking so quiet and so peaceful and the enemy thinks you're weak. And so now suddenly you rising up and you got a war cry and that enemy has to fall back. That enemy has to retreat, resist the devil and he or she, come on, will flee. You see, there was that season where it was a time to love. And everybody, especially around the holiday season, oh, I love you. I love you too. You know, it's peaceful. Everybody, you know, connecting and reconnecting and reconciliation and all this, right? Restoration. And then there was that season where, ooh, some folks, they were just dispensing the hate. Ooh, the haters, the haters this and the haters that, right? Somebody always got something to say. And some folks still got something to say. And, oh, well, keep keep your hateration over there <laughs> unless you want to fall into the curse that is falling upon so many individuals because they just don't walk right with the one true God. And then, of course, now, you know, we come around and we see some more war again, or we hear rumors of war. And we say, wait a minute, but I thought we were in that time of peace. Well, there's always the calm before the storm. And for some of you all, yes, you went through the love, you went through the hate, you're in a spirit of peace. And now Nicole comes along and she's talking about prepping for war. Jesus, didn't we just get over a war not that long ago? I'm telling you, spiritual warfare, emotional warfare, sexual warfare even. Well, what does that look like? What does that feel like? You don't want to know what that feels like. But what you do want to know is that sexual warfare, that's where the enemy has his minions that rise up and create all sorts of scandals to bring a man down low. A weak man at that or a weak woman has uh, you thinking all sorts of wild thoughts and acting on those wild thoughts uninhibited and then somebody's got a camera going or somebody's got you know audio going or it's the kind of thing where everybody is doing everything under the sun and now there is this passing of sickness between bodies that's why you shouldn't be taking them lightly when they say you shouldn't be getting involved with people because we got some other things they don't put in their bodies sexually because now your reproductive organs are going to have their share of issues later on in life and then that's a war that you're going to be crying about jesus and you're going to be asking and pleading the blood of jesus and i wish well see this is why you should be looking at people's medical reports that you decide that you want to be intimate with rather than just taking their word for things mm, jesus so any type of battle that you're up against, and I've been throwing little examples out here and there, but any battle that you're up against, I want to know who's around me, who's going to support me when I'm crying out, when I'm upset. This is another issue that I'm running into with some people. They don't have anybody around them. There's a man, he's dealing with the fact that his wife is in and out of the hospital, in and out of the hospital. And so he's desperate for somebody just to listen to him. And so, you know, you listen, but you can't be all things to everyone. 
And then they set their life up in such a way that now they need a listening ear. But when you was with your jealous wife or you was with your jealous husband, you see, and you pushed everybody away. And now that they're sick or now that they're not paying attention to you or now that they're losing their mind or now that they're, you know, working all the time. Where's your friends, Jesus? That's why some of you all who are so possessive and controlling and jealous and you got your issues from way back when and you trying to draw the line in the sand and you're telling your partner you can't have this female friend and you can't have that male friend and all this other stuff. Then when the war shows up, relationship challenges and so forth, such as health issues that send somebody to a hospital where they got tubes up their nose and their mouth is covered. Who do I run to? Who do I talk to? And maybe they don't have their mother any longer or maybe they don't have their father any longer. And nobody thought about this sort of thing at the time because you had the strength or maybe the person, you know, who's going through once had the strength to sit there and listen to you and talk to you and run for you and clean for you and cook for you, you know, and and uh, provide you with some cost savings and help you with things and buy things and all that. And now I can't do that. So where is your support during times of spiritual battle, physical battle. And these need to be people that's not about, oh, okay, baby, I'm there for you. Come on out. You know, I've been wanting to be with you for quite some time. <laughs> no, 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 no. What are we doing? The support network has to be like soldiers. I'm in a battle right now. I don't need you talking about on the front line how you can do for me sexually. I don't need you to be flirting and, and all this other stuff. And this is what I saw unfold right before my eyes was there was a woman who she suddenly appeared out of nowhere while this man's wife was going through cancer. And she's sitting up there and she making her presence be known. And she had the terminal type of cancer. So she literally had days before she was going to pass away. And this woman who the man worked with just kept showing up you see and I felt the spirit come from her and I said yes yeah, she's emotional support and she's uh, <laughs> some kind of other support so she's strategically putting herself in a position so that once that wife is buried she can take care of them mm -hmm. but did God call you let's say for some of you all <laughs> Let's put you to the test did, did God call you to be there as a soldier or did the demonic call you to be there as a harlot? Let's just call it for what it is. Because some individuals, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? Hey, cash, a life insurance policy, because we talking that kind of talk these days. Because some folks is taking some things lightly, thinking they're going to still be here 10, 15, 20 years down the line. That's not happening. And so, and we saw, we see it in the spiritual realm because of things that they did, because of things that they continue to do, you know, and it's not all based on what media says. There's a lot of things that's going to take place that ain't got nothing to do with the media and the media is not going to report those stories. Instead, they're going to put them all under one umbrella, under one subject, under one topic. But we know better people, they leave us for a number of different reasons. And you all need to fight and make sure that they put the right reason as to why somebody left on the certificate when they check out of here. But anyway, that's a whole nother topic. So you have these individuals who they're checking out of here and slowly but surely, and then you may be the one that mm, you still got some years on you and you want people around you that there's a battle ahead and I need you to be a soldier for me. I need you to have my back because I'm going in. Do you or don't you? And no, I don't need somebody that's going to pleasure my body. I mean, we got some folks that are so desperate that they... <laughs> They'll talk to customer service reps. I don't care what industry. They'll talk to customer service reps telling them about all these different things that's going on with them. And we'll even go so far as to, I like the way you talk. Can I get your phone number? <laughs> Can I see what you're about? You see? Or like when I was um, working at the hotel <laughs> a few years back. I mean, some folks, 
they thought that us working at the front desk that we had other job titles and i had to tell some people ever so politely but firmly no 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 i'm not here to be the comfort for you while you're away on business but some folks though this one lady this older lady she was about 70 plus years old she was going through her battles of physical illness but she still had enough energy to talk to me to tell me about how she serviced how she serviced the men while she was in a role that i was in and i said you did what and the lord caused her to have some type of um physical attack where she once she said what she said right in front of me i kid you not that woman got to shaking and then she lost her footing and she ended up um once i had walked away from her because at the time she looked totally fine after she told her story but then the next thing i know she was on the emergency phone talking about i'm in the stairwell i don't know what happened to me i'm sitting on the stairwell can you come back and pick me up what so so then the lord he called my mind to remembrance he said remember what she told you he said i wasn't pleased with her then and i'm not pleased with her now Woo, jesus and for some of you all you see the battle doesn't have to be there but he's not pleased with you for things that you did um 10 years ago that you still feel like it's okay to talk about it's okay to promote I mean this is an older woman talking to a younger woman she didn't know what my platform was she didn't know that me and God we you know we we tight we cool you know <laughs> have some challenges every now and again but and not typically of course it's brought on by me not wanting to say something or do something or you know not acting in ways that I'm supposed to but uh you know when you do things when you say things and when you're perpetuating some foolishness and you think that you know well i'm older now and i'm not doing all that but and you're telling young people some things now there's this battle that rises up and this is the battle that you don't know about until god shows up and he tells you oh this battle right here is because of the things that you said the things that you did or didn't do this battle is for you not being the counselor that i called you to be this battle is for you not being the wise mother or wise father that i called you to be this isn't about trying to impress the young people entertain the young people get a joke get a laugh this is about you being a child of god that's living righteously and encouraging others to live righteously and ultimately to draw near to their creator not the denomination now that's another subject some folks they're battling spiritually because of the division that's within the different sects the the um and that's s-e-c-t-s sex um between the uh different denominations there's division so you got this religious sect here and this religious sect there and we believe this and we believe that and there's no meeting of the minds and so then you get worldly individuals that they come in and they create their systems and their designs and their models and they tell you well this is how you can do it if you guys want to you know live among each other peacefully so here's a common topic that we're all talking about over here and why don't you jump on that topic and then meanwhile when you measure that topic up to what scripture says you have no business preaching that kind of topic you have no business sitting up there encouraging people to subscribe to that particular belief or what have you but you get some folks who they do this sort of thing and so now there's this battle and the only crowd that they got is it's not a war crowd going into a battle with strength and courage and bravery and all that instead they got a cry that is depressed it's suicidal it's sad it's going into the kitchen too many times grabbing food and drink and we see 
all of it show up on them in their eyes, in their walk, in their talk. And we say things like, he was once so strong in Christ. She was once so energetic. Is that all he or she does on the off season is eat and eat and eat? How are you going to go into war when you don't have the strength to be able to walk the distance or run the mile? How are you going to be able to say the things that God wants you to say when you can't even catch your breath, Jesus? How are you going to be able to do the kinds of things that God wants you to do if you're not willing to make the necessary sacrifices to build yourself up mentally, physically, and spiritually? Some of the strongest minds are the ones that was willing to give up the worldly and the fleshly. Come on. If I'm going into battle, I have to have my armor. I got to be suited up, saints, as well as sinner. Ephesians 6, 11, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. The devil is scheming right now. The devil is coming up with just another plan to take you out of here. I told you he don't like humans and he puts humans up to killing other humans. I told you all this in audios. Sprinkled here, sprinkled there. Things like the enemy's after you, the enemy's jealous of you, the enemy's a narcissist, the enemy's a psychopath, the enemy is hiding behind undiagnosed, unchecked personality disorders. The folks that had some of these issues, they were offended by some of the messages. I wasn't taking their side. I was taking the victim's side who had been putting up with them for so long who didn't for uh, um, for the, um, putting up with the individuals who didn't want to get the help, who kept fighting with them. And so they had a war cry and their war cry was, I'm out. And some folks said, uh, uh, that's what you're doing, huh? You're telling people to just leave the situation or what have you. No, here's some help. Here's a 1-800 number, but I got to go. I don't have to keep listening to you yelling and screaming and you keep talking about you got this issue and you, you know, for some were diagnosed. And so therefore understand, love me, you know, pray for me, hold me, come for me and all that. How long are we going to keep doing that? I told you to get the help. I told you to stay on your medicine. I told you to do what you needed to do. But we're not going to keep doing this. That codependency foolishness, uh-uh. Mad at the world. I got a war cry. My war cry sometimes isn't about somebody on the other side where I'm going into the war. My war cry is, I'm out. Ah, and I yell on the way out the door. <laughs> a happy yell, mind you. <laughs> You know, why is it that we got these individuals that they just think that because they go through and they're not willing to fight and they're not willing to sacrifice or give up anything that we're supposed to just acquiesce? Well, you're a Christian. You're supposed to do. Don't tell me anything about what I'm supposed to do as a Christian. You haven't fought the battles that I fought. You want somebody to come along and keep you from those battles. You don't want me to talk about the battles. You don't want me to talk to other people about the battles. You don't want me to share information that's going to uplift somebody who's contemplating suicide. See, people don't think about the bigger picture. They don't know what our platforms are. All they know is, don't you talk about me? Well, your story it, that you don't want to speak about is what's free in some individuals. And when you don't speak your story, God raises people up to speak your story. And now you got a battle cry that, well, for some of you all, it's not a battle cry, but you calling it that, but it's not. Because you didn't rise up. Because you didn't step up to the plate. Because I got issue with, well, but you're not willing to deal with the criticism that we deal with. You're not willing to deal with the folks giving you the side eye. You're not, deal you're not dealing with loss of income. People don't want to work with folks who got platforms like me. People don't want to work with people who wrote books like me. I knew what I had to give up because the Lord showed me. He said, let me tell you something. There's going to be some people. Once again, they hated Jesus and they'll hate you. Therefore, they're not going to even let you. 
walk through their doors. This has been going on for years. And they don't even have to tell me. Some do, though. They politely, you know, send me a letter and tell me, you know, we regret to inform you that we have moved on with another candidate. You see? Because they done done their research and so forth and oh, you're one of them. And you're not going to come to my establishment and proselytize. And meanwhile, excuse me, who said that I was called to come to your establishment and proselytize? No, I'm coming to your establishment just to get my job done. And then if God calls me to speak and it's not during working hours, then that's between me and the individual that he's called me to speak to. And it's away from the job, you see. And so for some of you all, now there's the financial battle because I'm going in to war and somebody is saying that they're not giving. And instead of giving, they're taking from, oh, is this what we're doing? Okay, well, if you take from me, my God is going to take from you because you got sons and daughters. See, some people forget about that. If God is calling an individual to bring someone in with their ideas, with their education, their knowledge or what have you, and that person or group says no, and the only reason you can come up with is because you was on their social media and you saw this and that, whatever, then sooner or later, you end up having your struggles on that job. You end up having your financial issues or the people that you least expect, like sons and daughters end up having their share of issues. And some folks say, I don't understand. I can't seem to get a break. Why, oh, why? Why? Why, oh, why? Because you got to think about those times that you did what you did. So that leads me to not only does someone have the financial battle of I can't receive, I can't get or what have you. If it is for righteous reasons that you want what you want, then your battle cry should be nice and loud toward the one true God, Lord Jesus, you know that I don't mean anything by this. I just want this, this, that, and the other. If it is your will, if it is your will, thank you, Lord Jesus. Then of course, there's those verbal wars. There's the mother and the daughter and the father and the son. And then there's the cousin and the aunt and the uncle and the grandmother and granddad and the foster mama and the adopted mama, the spiritual mother and the spiritual father and all these different things people and there's the war that's going on because folks are saying things and doing things that are rubbing people the wrong way and internationally as well as nationally you think these things don't go on they go on behind boardroom or in boardrooms they happen at the white house they happen at <laughs> not just your house but also the neighbor's house even though everybody appears to have it together isaiah 2 4 he, being God, will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. So that is a word of encouragement for some of you all. Despite the war cries, despite the battles and all of the issues that folks are going through, he, our God, will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. See, this sort of thing, even way back <laughs> way back when nation will not take up sword against nation nor will they train for war anymore that time is coming and some of you all who've been studying and showing that self-approved for a mighty long time you've been asking lord when are we going to get peace for the land not yet but we will there's that season of peace that's coming up nation will not take up sword against nation because they're going to realize that's not going to get the job done Wow, <laughs> of course not. And they're also going to realize that if you're training for war, I'm training for war, and we all training for war, all you're doing is putting me on edge. So I'm not going to want to come to the table and talk peacefully when I know that right behind you there's a young boy or a young man that's ready to cut my head off because of all of the propaganda that you put out in the atmosphere. See, once again, putting out wars and rumors of wars that aren't necessary 
And this is why some of you all are at war with one another because somebody didn't have to say that. So why did she say that? You see, because something within her is at war with you that is unchecked, undiagnosed, possibly, right? There is that war that why are we even having a dispute among each other? What's going on? Because you're disappointed. You're disappointed once again that someone let you down. You're disappointed once again because somebody's not paying you attention. You're disappointed once again because somebody said that they love you, but they got a funny way of showing it. And so what do we do? We have these verbal wars with people. That's really not about the subject that we got the nasty little attitude about. It's really not about that subject. It's really about what you haven't done for me lately. That's what it boils down to. You didn't hold me. You didn't kiss me. You didn't love on me. You didn't tell me that, you know, you care for me. You praying for me and all this other stuff. I wanted to hear your voice. That's what drew me in. Mm, I'm talking to somebody. You see, we got to go back to why did we like the favorite aunt? Why did we like, you know, the husband? <laughs> what, what drew us in when it came to our favorite friend? You see? Go back to the early days and that person nine times out of 10 is no longer doing those things. They may have um, ended up in their personality and all of their challenges ended up moving away from that personality that once drew you in and they don't plan on ever going back there. So then what do we do with that? For some of you all, you've already made up in your mind, you're signing the documents that say we're done separation, divorce, because you used to be the faithful one, but now you're the unfaithful one. Your mind is everywhere, but on a relationship. So got to go. And then there's the one who you used to be the favorite aunt back in the day or the favorite uncle or the favorite cousin or niece or nephew or whatever. But then you got a hold of God or maybe you didn't get a hold of God. And so we're at war because there's spiritual things you know, opposition, their spiritual frustration, their spiritual confusion, their spiritual misunderstandings and what have you, because you don't know, you don't know. And you didn't want to know. And you didn't ask 2020 questions when the time was there for you to ask questions and in all thy getting, getting understanding and you didn't do it. And so, you know, these sorts of things take place between families and then throw in you know, all the people who have passed away, you know, I will tell you, you're never the same when your closest have passed away. And that's okay. Stop letting people tell you, you're not the same ever since. My so I'm a stronger person as a result. I'm a better person as a result. Because I'm not taking people's foolishness. Because I'm not weak. Didn't some folks say that we was weak minded and we were flaky or we were flighty or we were stupid or we were dumb. But it's interesting that for some of you all, now that you got your strength, now that you got your comeback, <laughs> you'll come up and you're out of the battle now. And you've already had your war cry and you already know who is friend and who is foe around you, who is soldier. Right. Now they got issue with you, of course, because as long as you were weak and you were dependent on them as, and as long as you, you know, were like, oh my gosh, everything's great and bright and cheery and, you know, and you didn't have a care in the world, they knew that they could get the upper hand on you. But then, no, I do have plenty of cares in the world and one of my cares is not about you these days because I got my own to deal with. Now you're not liked. Now they are just making up stuff. Just starting up stuff, just saying whatever they want to say about you. And the Lord says, we're going to ignore that because you don't have that much time. I have to keep reminding some people, you don't have that much time to be sitting up here talking and arguing and fussing and fighting with people. Bye-bye. See you. <laughs> a long time ago, I was about 20 and um, there was a woman who, whenever she had these little issues, you know, with some folks, she wasn't going to sit there. This was at the workplace, mind you. She wasn't going to sit there and keep talking and talking because, you know, some folks, well, you know, Jim, Bob, Peter, you know, I just want to talk about this. I just need to get this off my chest. She wasn't one of them. <laughs> 
you know, she came in, she had her piece of paper because she had everything written down. So that way she didn't have to do a bunch of talking. When you get a moment, can you take a look at that? Thank you. And then they would start with, well, what is this? And blah, blah, blah. you know what? Take a look. Got to go. Got to get back on the phone. Take care of some things. <gasps> bye bye. And I used to hear that little bye bye. And I said, uh oh. <laughs> I say that she has let them know that, look, this is how we're going to deal with this thing. And it's not going to be in the way that you're used to somebody going back and forth, back and forth so that you can sit up there and cut them down because you mad because the night before your wife didn't take care of her business or whatever, you know, it's just like she she knew how to avoid them situations. I will not be your verbal punching bag today. Bye bye. <laughs> So for some of you all, you see, you know, somebody is orchestrating a battle that is unnecessary, whether it's a verbal battle in the next room or down the street or at, hey, they could be planning for the next holiday event and trying to set up a snare for you. You see, mm -mm. they could be setting up a trap for when somebody pass away. Yes, yeah, she going to show up. And when she show up, I'm going to let her know at the funeral. No, you're not going to get that opportunity because God says, I see Hmm, Lord Jesus, what your heart holds. And I'm holding you accountable for what you've already spoken. Jesus, and what you've already done. And some folks, they thought that they were sitting in the shadows, whispering and saying whatever they wanted to say. And now it's all catching up to them. So now it's not a battle between us and they it's a battle between them and God Jesus oh Lord Jesus it gets serious doesn't it real quick Jeremiah forty six sixteen. they will stumble repeatedly they will fall over each other and we're gonna see this in the media I'm seeing it I'm seeing people I don't know why they're running but they're falling over each other. Something happens in the spirit, in, in the spiritual realm, as well as in the physical realm. And it'll look something like what recently happened where somebody heard like gun well, well, many people heard gunshots that were outside of a stadium and they started running and there was some panicking. Well, some more episodes in the future are like that, where there's this falling over, falling over. And the Lord is doing that. He's allowing it. The enemy, of course, has his, you know, he has his role, but God is allowing it. They will stumble repeatedly. They will fall over each other. They will say, get up. Let us go back to our own people and our native lands away from the sword of the oppressor. Now, being that this channel for many years, I've talked about the oppressor, right? And the oppressed. And for some of you all, you feel like systems and policies and regulations and rules and the presence of military and so forth, it's oppressive in nature. And that is to be, that's not something that's going to be avoided with just constant talking over and over again. There are some things that have to take place in order to raise the red flag, in order to cause people to have such a filled heart, especially for a soldier, it's hard. It's hard for them to have a filled heart, right? Because their programming tells them that we are going to protect this land. We are going to protect the nation. We are going to protect whomever, whatever. But then God comes in and the oppressor realizes that not only is he or she the oppressor, but they are also being oppressed too that's a powerful word for someone for some group for some establishment and so it's going to be like the hypnotist at the end that of of a session says something like okay coming back now coming back now you know um one two three you're coming back and ah <sighs> back to center again somebody their programming or groups their programming has to be broken and it'll be like that buzzer it'll be like the alarm it'll be like um a code word of sorts that'll snap them out of whatever it is that the oppressor has put upon them to oppress others 
I know that's a deep word, but some of you all, you get it because you know what programming is and you know how programming works. And you know about mind control. Jeremiah 51 20. You are my war club, my weapon for battle. With you, I shatter nations. Okay, listen up. You are my war club, my weapon for battle. With you, I shatter nations. With you, I destroy kingdoms. Okay, and there are those who are set aside, who are in establishments, who the warfare is out there. The warfare is being planned out, but the ultimate goal is to shatter, shatter select nations and to destroy select kingdoms. Joel 3 9 says proclaim this among the nations prepare for war so this is what is happening for some individuals those who are close to soldiers know there is the preparation the preparation the preparation families are moved here they're moved there you know it could be in the middle of the night it could be early in the morning but there are those things that take place to prepare for war rouse the warriors There are also those individuals who they are self-proclaimed warriors, right? They are self-proclaimed soldiers. These individuals are the ones that have been roused up. These are also the individuals that folks consider are dumb and stupid and, you know, they are not organized and they don't know what they're doing and all this. That is nothing more than a front. That is nothing more than false programming. There are many, many, many individuals that know a lot because they were once soldiers in armies. You see, they're not stupid. <clears throat> and what has happened over the years has been this turning away. Um, what has happened over the years is that uh, those who know about programming know that as a person becomes older, they break programming. Okay. Um And sometimes when the wrong people are involved with programming, they end up doing some things that their desired results don't come out. Instead, there's something that is twisted and messy and (laughs) difficult and scary even. And uh, next thing you know, people are sitting up there talking about why is he acting that way? Why is she acting that way? What's happening? Yeah, you press the wrong button, so to speak. You stirred up the wrong mindset. So they're roused. They're roused. And that's why some individuals need to keep their mouths shut forever. Because some of the words that they speak are trigger trigger words. And as long as you got the individuals that are out there that, that are speaking for selfish reasons, selfish gain, it's not about building up a nation or you know helping others out it's just because i'm mad you know and so you're putting out these trigger words and so forth and they have an interesting effect on some people you're putting out energy vibration waves brain waves and so forth that cause problems well you're going to get some zombies you're going to get some people that's going to do some things And you're going to say, I thought you were fighting a war with me. I thought you were level headed. I thought we could be able to, you know, go into the camp and do some things. And then Jim's over here walking around in circles and yelling and he's he's messing up and he's hurting his fellow brothers and sisters. And that happens, too. And then, unfortunately, a brother in warfare or a sister in warfare has to end up taking care of his or her own. Micah 7, 8, do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I've fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. And the enemy thinks, well, you know, hey, bad things happen to you, you know, as a result of. And, well, see, if you didn't say this, if you didn't do this, and maybe this, that, and the other. But, hey, we rise, you know. Whether we fall physically or we fall spiritually, we rise, you know, some of you others, you had your moments where you were in darkness, right? Sitting in darkness. But you know what you said? The reason why you still got your head about you, whereas some other folks are out there and they don't have their head. They're not level headed. It's because in your darkness, you called out to the Lord. And some of you all, as you're listening to this message, you're calling out to the Lord because you see 
because this is nothing more than confirmation because you've got info right you've got intel you know and so what i encourage you to do is is to call out to the one true god and ask him to keep your mind to ask him to protect you to ask him to give you the courage to ask him to bless you with the tools financially mentally physically spiritually all of it angels of protection encamped all around me as i go into battle because for some of you all, we talked about family battles, right? But for others, they are dealing with international and national battles that are very complex in nature. And that are hell-bent on killing, stealing, and destroying from others. Their livelihoods. Their families. Their lands. Lord Jesus. Matthew 24, 6. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars but see to it that you are not alarmed okay so stop with getting all scary and weird acting and running around and telling your family oh my gosh da, 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 da. don't fall for that doing the fear mongering and trying to get everybody else all crazy acting right along with you if you are that nervous and that scared then you need to just stay off the phones and stay off the internet and get yourself together. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. But see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. Some people. Especially some of you believers. You are called into prayer battles. Like where you're praying. And you're breaking strongholds. And you're casting out demons and all of that. How are you going to be able to stay focused on your prayer. If you're alarmed by what you see in media. Turn that mess off. We need some people that's going to stay level headed. We don't need people that everybody watching the news, everybody all programmed under the same programming. No, stop. That's why it's called television programming, internet programming, parental programming. I got audios about that years, years ago. Parental programming. You're programmed by that parent who wants to keep telling you about what they saw, what they heard, what they went through, what their experiences were like. And that same fear programming, that nervous programming, that racial divide programming that financial divide programming the rich and the poor that educational programming i am smart you're dumb that type of stuff how are you going to be able to stay focused on what god's plan is when you got all of that foolishness floating around in your mind huh god's breaking that that's what's happening when you when you're kinder to that person who don't look like you. God's breaking that racial programming. You know your mama would have never talked to them people. Mm. Your daddy would have never went over there. But God is breaking the generational programming. Hallelujah. In this way, you won't have these unnecessary wars with people. Jesus. Instead, we can all get together. And fight a common foe, a common cause, a common issue. If more of us get together, as opposed to dividing among each other, because I don't like you because you're this or because you're that. Maybe, just maybe, we might be the soldiers, huh? That went over nations as opposed to destroying nations. Wouldn't that be nice? Revelation 21, 7, those who are victorious will inherit all this. And I will be their God, and they will be my children. Romans 8, 37, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. Hallelujah. And, of course, for those who will every now and again do some things, and God has told us not to move, in some cases, he will tell you that. During times of war, Romans 12, 19, do not take revenge, my dear friends. See, the narcissist wants you to take revenge. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. Can we leave room for God's wrath, please? That's why we need the prayer warriors, the level-headed people. Leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. And yes, there will be some things that will make you want to go out there and take revenge. The Lord says we need to be leaving room for God's wrath. Thank you. Thank you, O Heavenly Father. I am wrapping up this message. With 1 Timothy 6.12 and 2 Corinthians 10.4. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made 
your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And those of you all who have given your life to Christ, amen, hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to do what? To demolish strongholds. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for demolishing strongholds, for just using others in the near future to demolish strongholds. That's what the objective is. That's what it ultimately boils down to. Strongholds we are demolishing. We have divine authority. We have divine power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are stepping on serpents. If she undoubtable, she gaze. Hallelujah. Moment with the Lord. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you for another inspiring message, another moving message, another thought provoking message, another wise message, another message that takes us right back to you. Thank you, God. Thank you for your son who has died on the cross for us, Jesus Christ. Thank you, listener. And if you would like to share this audio message with someone who you think is going through his or her share of battles, by all means, please do so. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. And of course, as always, we do welcome giving. Thank you to those of you all who have already given. And thank you to those who the Lord is moving on your heart to give. Blessings to you.